Those look like really big jumps. And it's muddy. Oh my god, I'm not gonna make it. I'm definitely not gonna make it. We are back here with another video. We are super excited because this time we're gonna actually be getting private lessons for the first time here at MX Factory at Spokes MX in Austin. Yeah, we're gonna be working with Tyler. Um, he's, I think, one of the owners, if not the owner of the MX Factory. Uh, we've been following him since the beginning of our dirt bike journey on YouTube, um, trying to learn everything we can from his lessons, and now we get to do it in person. So, we're really looking forward to it. Yeah, I can't wait to see how much we improve, hopefully, today. warmed up yet okay but I could do better than that but that was just not good that's okay don't don't put pressure on yourself because I'm gonna I'm gonna do that for you okay you know what I mean just be as relaxed as possible because I'll change things that are gonna make you feel uncomfortable I'm not gonna put pressure on you but it'll just make you feel uncomfortable so the more you're making yourself feel uncomfortable the harder it's gonna be for you to feel comfortable when changing stuff up your seated position is really good actually okay sit on the front of the seat Bend, like what's gonna happen when you bend is gonna bring that upper body forward a little yeah. bit. So when you hit the gas, it's not gonna pull you off the back. Yeah, okay. okay. And so a lot of people will think about okay, if my head's forward, I need to hold on with my arms. What you've got to do is learn to kind of unlock your hips so you have a flat back and start to use your core muscles to counter that power, right? So what we're gonna do on this next reel is we're gonna go bottom top. So we're gonna think about our feet and our arms. That's all. Okay, we're gonna make sure our feet are tucked into the bike. We're gonna stay seated most of the track. You Seated. So I'm looking for feet turned in. Mm -hmm. Okay, good foundation there. We want to be on the ball of our foot at all times. You guys are pretty good at that. I can tell you've already been through the paces a little bit on that. But try to turn your feet in a little more. What you're going to feel when you turn your feet in a little more is that your knees are going to be a little more tight to the bike. Right? You're going to be a little, a little more stable down low. Okay. From there, we're going to try to create a flat back. Right. So we're just turning the hips out a little bit. When you sit on the seat, you just kind of poke your butt out just a hair. Where you've got this and then the front of the front of your core engages most people round down low and turn off the front of their core and put all the strain on their back muscles and we have back problems and we our glutes get real tight and all that stuff so we want to try to start to get to work these together right it's way important when we start standing a lot all right so just have that in our mind we're seated we just kind of want to have this good posture right so where the body can flex like any athletic position you're ever in it stems from that posture, right? You don't ever do anything right. explosive like this. Yeah. Right? So we want to get here. Not to say we need to be explosive, but we need to be strong. Okay? And from there, we're just going to box the elbows. For you, that's going to require you to move further on the seat. The reason you're losing that front end of that understeer is there's not enough weight to get to the knob you see grip. Okay. okay, a little bit of that could be just coming in at, a, at an uh -huh. incorrect pace or an incorrect line. But I think a lot of it's just your seated position. Okay, okay so just think about this. We're this is just our path, right? What we're doing is, is the focus. If you're not able to do it on this path, make a big loop around it, right? Use your space. Go in the grass, make a big loop around it. If you're able to do it with a turn, you can that good to maintain that, stay on the path. Right? Don't worry about the jump. Don't worry about anything. Don't worry about speed. Nothing. I'm looking for good footwork, going to that brake, coming back to the peg, box up your body, straight back. For my shifting, how much should I go? For a second? Probably ride the whole thing in second. Yeah. If you didn't want to worry about shifting right now. Second? Yeah, just throw it second and let it be there. Okay. Yeah. Same thing for you. You can probably go second. Uh, uh, second or third. The rear sprocket. It's got a really tall first. Okay. Yeah. 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 It's, it's not so much about what gear just yet. We'll get to a point where I take you out in the field. Maybe not today, but we will at some point. Where I'm like, okay, we're going to turn the throttle wide open and we're going to shift two gears. Oh, oh, oh. oh yeah. Get used to that fear. Oh yeah. Right. That's a, that's another. But we need to make sure we can maintain good position, and we're strong in that position, which we know takes time. Right. Before we start ripping on the throttle and understanding what that feels like, 
you may have already done it a bunch, blah, 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 but you probably haven't done it directly a bunch. Yeah. All right, so let's start here, build the foundation. And so what this is gonna put you in is what I would call perfect seated position. All right, if we can be in perfect seated position and rep it out, get the shoulders to burn, get the inner thighs to burn a little bit, get that back flat, then we'll start popping up in a good standing position. We'll start to wrap that out. All right, from there we'll go in and do some tighter turns and get that bike to go a little bit. Okay. What's, the, what's your take on leg out or not? For now, I wouldn't worry about it. Okay. No. Leg out's for deep ruts. Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. Right now, I wouldn't worry about it. You can ride most of this track out here with your feet on the pegs, and as you get better, you just take them off less. Okay. Right? But deep ruts are some unavoidable moments where the, the ground is just like hitting your feet. Okay. Right? And that's why a lot of people you know, traditionally, yep. like old school, like leg up all the time. Yeah. Right? And. You know, you don't need it. That's right, yeah, that's so kind of one my more take step on it. that you don't okay. have to do if you're in good position. Now, you also have to have pretty decent feel for the bike. The front end starts to go, you kind of need to be able to help Too yourself bad, with yeah. your foot a little bit um, in conditions like this. A lot of times that front end on catch you come back underneath you and you don't need it. Yep. But every once in a while, you need to have access to that foot. Cool, okay. but for now, feet on pegs, box elbow straight back. Okay. okay. <laughs> Burns a little, but not hard. But yeah. I don't know. Am I too far? Am I in no, far? Okay. You look great. How'd that feel? Uh, feel it in the tricep, big time. Yeah. Yeah. Probably just putting a little pressure, leaning into the bars mm -hmm. a little bit, tighten here, loose here. All right. So forever in your riding career, you got to think of yourself like a tree. Okay. You got the roots in the ground with your feet. You got the trunk with your lower body, and you got your limbs and your leaves with your upper body. Your upper body should be pretty. Think about trunk here to here, right? And then up here, it should be pretty loose, right? Your bike should be able to move to and from you. It shouldn't feel like you're death gripping, any of that. That's all done here, okay? So think about if you're starting to feel it in your arms, other than just holding your elbows up, right? Like if you hold your elbows up, you're gonna get a natural burn yeah. here. And eventually the strength will build and you won't burn anymore. But holding that up is good. It should be the only place that you feel. You shouldn't feel it in your forearms, no. your hands, or your really your off back this part of your right arm, triceps, biceps. All right, so that just lets me know that there's some, there's some sort of, um, there's some sort of body like leaning into the bar somewhere, right? You're holding yourself up. Right, but I feel it in my palms too, big time. Mine is just this. Which is fine, that's yeah. great. Where I see the difference between him and you is he's trying to come into the corners a little bit faster and break. So this is something you guys both need to start noticing when you're riding is that if you're on the gas, your body position changes, if you're on the brake, your body position changes. If you're posting, your body position changes. It's always this, right? So if you gas, you should be leaning into the power. If you brake, you should be kind of dropping back away from it, right? And you'll naturally feel a little tension in your triceps, you just kind of push it against the bars, but you'll be able to take most of that in your core. <clears throat> so we're gonna do that again. We're just gonna add a little bit, because I like what I saw. For you, I want you to not use your clutch when you're braking. Okay. And I would like to see you, at least in the parts where you feel safe, a little throttle 
and a little back break. Okay. Okay. The second piece with you is you're running a little wide in those tight turns. Yes. You find yourself kind of wanting to go off the track a little bit. Yes. Your head's turning late. So I see you looking up going down the straightaways and then I see you get to the turn you look down like this. Yes. Okay, so see if you can maintain just a little throttle, a little break, and then maintain this position, right? And then you get, say, where the rock is, that little rock on the inside right yeah. there. When the front tire passes that, you should already be thinking about looking to your jump. Okay? If you wait too late, you're already off the track. If you don't anticipate that with like 10 feet closer than what you even think, you're already running off the track and there's no real way to get yourself back without trying to cut the front end and a lot of times it washes out. That's what I feel like I'm doing, washing, like I'm slipping. Yeah, it's gonna slip a little bit. So. You gotta think about but it's your, your front wheel and back wheel, your front wheel has about, you know, maybe if it starts here, it can come to here before you're gonna really wash it all the way out. Okay. And the back wheel is even more, right? It's got a lot of room to slide around and push you around, right? You're, you're not necessarily gonna slide that back in out unless you make a real big mistake on a really slick surface. Okay. Okay, so what you've gotta to start to get comfortable with is that, that stuff happening and you not reacting to it. Okay. Right, let it move a little bit. You found that you used the front end slip like five, six times. The first, yeah, now that I'm sitting higher up, it's minimalized, yeah. Yeah, big it's time. minimalized, but when it does, you ride out of it mm. and you haven't fallen one time. Mm. Right, and it's moved. I went over and, and measured because I watched you do it at this point. It moved about four to six inches mm -hmm. and then caught. Right. Yep. Right, all it's doing is looking for track. Right. Yep. And if it gets too far and you get on too much of a lean, right. sometimes you don't find it. Yeah. But the front tire, when it starts to move, it's looking for traction. And every time it does, it just evaluate okay, what did I do wrong? Can I see right how it, like how far you can go without it washing out? Yeah. I don't know. Uh, what I'm what saying is like, how? if you're leaned over, your tire could slide about this much before it gets on too much of an edge where it's going to go Oh, okay. Edge. Right? Basically, long story short is, don't worry about it. Okay. Let the bike move underneath. Get comfortable with that thing moving. If you watch them really fast, if you watch them all like the pros on TV, yeah. their bikes are never straight. Right. Yeah. No. They're never They're straight. Always. They're always dancing. But if you ask them, they will probably say, no, it's going straight. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Right? They're so conditioned to that bike moving, but if you watch the upper body, the upper body's always straight. Oh, right. Yeah. The bike can yeah. kick out and they're here. Yeah. Right? It yeah. can go that way and they're here. Right? They stay center line all the time. The yeah. bike kicks in the air, they're here. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And then, then when they land, it comes back underneath uh -huh. them. It's only when you start to go with it mm -hmm. is when it goes bad. You're in the air and it kicks sideways and you're over here with it, it's going to slap you. But if you're way over here and you let that thing kick back underneath you, it nine times out of ten will straighten up. Even the best in the world, like you watch these guys, pause them on the landing of every jump, mm -hmm. they're always landing a little sideways. Oh, yeah. Right? And so it's really just getting comfortable and being loose. Right? Getting comfortable, understanding the technique, and then letting the bike do its thing mm -hmm. without freaking out. Yeah. The freak out moments is like, ah! <laughs> like, you know, like, I don't want to be yeah. on that thing. Let go. Yeah. Uh, question. Yeah. So uh, in the past, when I've worked on um, entering a corner and braking, uh, so the, I don't know if my, my rear brake is too tight, but it locks up and then it'll stall the engine until I lock yeah. the brake and it kickstarts. Let me so. feel it because I didn't notice that happening and I, I understand why you're... Can I ride it yeah, real quick? <sighs> yeah, that's why you pull the clutch in, right? Yeah, because I'll pull the I mean that's stalling at 50 times okay gotcha. there's not much you can do there other than just know that it can be done yep, yep. and then just be okay with overshooting the corner where you don't have an obstacle okay. that you could crash into gotcha right pick your corners wisely that you charge in and work on that no clutch break okay uh or so no it, it, was, it was fine that no adjustment yeah. okay. it even lacks a little power in my really? opinion okay yeah 
I can we have a little more too rough with it to stop it. Too too rough. Okay. Yeah. And so what that usually what that comes down to is you're braking too late. Okay. Right? You're like, oh crap, I'm in the corner. Mm -hmm. <sighs> you know, I gotta slow the bike down. Just start your process earlier. And all this stuff, you just start your process early, just like you turn in the head. Start all that earlier, and then you can eventually, when you get really comfortable with like, okay, I'm stopping too early, let me go in another three, four, five feet. Uh, but most of the time, it's like the decisions are made too late, and that's why they're frantic. Yeah. Okay. You know, so. All right. So we got a we got an agenda on this one. We know what we're doing. Go faster. A little faster for you. you want to see that footwork. I'm just really mainly looking for the footwork. All right. If we've got whatever, call it 12, 13 corners out here, 10, whatever it is. I'd like to see that foot going to the brake on 10 of 10. Not just necessarily coasting, because really we're just working on repetition in the movements. You know what I mean? I don't have my lap timer out yet. Oh God. Right? So I don't really care the speed, I just want the repetition. Elbows straight back, feet in, going to the brake. Okay. Yeah, it's feeling really good. Cool. Yep, yep. That's the answer to it all. Mm -hmm. Now, I won't lie to you, and I say that's a long journey for that to feel comfortable both seated and standing. Right, yeah. But that's the answer. Yeah. Right? To be in balance with your bike is everything. It's making me more aware of the core, so I'm feeling less of that in, in the arms now because yes. of it. Yes, you're both doing We've been practicing your drills. Yeah, yep. <laughs> and she'll literally be at the dinner table like. <laughs> yep. Literally. Yeah. Yeah, literally. Yep. <laughs> that's good though. That's how you get it. Yep. But now you you now now you're starting to like one. It's nice to say no. It's happening. It's right. Happening. Instead of you wondering like I think it's happening. Yeah. It's happening, and now you can start to relate that feeling of like oh that feels right. Right. That feels right. Um, so I want to continue in that one more before we go take a break, but I want to talk about this corner a little bit. You guys notice that I put a stump in your leg. Yes. Okay, so how, what would that make you feel like? I was going to go over it, but I didn't know if I was supposed to go over it. No, I want you to cut the inside. Oh. Yeah, I'll grab some tunnel. Okay. Like, okay. I don't have time to run over there. Okay. I wanted you to be able to see an obstacle, adjust your bike speed, Okay. miss out. Oh, okay. okay. Who's to say that we don't have another dad situation, he falls right in front of you. Yeah. Right? And something that you didn't think was happening happened. Oh yeah. How do you adjust? Yeah. Okay. Going down. So this is just me kind of throwing the brain off while you're moving on your brain. Are you able to throw your brain off, make the right decision, avoid the obstacle? This could be a rough bump hold. This is not yeah. human. Right? You're gonna come across this a lot. And then get back into okay, focus on our body, right? That's really what the really good people are good at. Yeah. Right? Mine gets thrown off, but they're back in their element immediately. It's like doesn't even a lot of times if you watch these races, the commentator will ask them, like, do you remember, you know, do you remember that pass? And I'll be like, yeah. I don't know, you know, yeah. Yeah. they're so in their yep. world that they don't even, like, notice these things. They may have made, like, a super aggressive, awesome pass, mm. don't remember. And that's the 
that's kind of what, that's just the start of like, hey, how do we get your mind to start working on that level where you can think about these three or four things that were worked on and avoid an obstacle that you didn't necessarily want to mm -hmm. hit. Right? And the second piece to that is, did you notice what you did to miss it? You just leaned the bike. The bike started to slide a little bit. I put my foot down. You put the bike down. You're like, I need to lean the bike. It's got to turn tighter, which is good. But we also have to watch the traction. We also have to know that if we lean on flat ground, we know that the more we lean, the less traction we'll get. Okay, we have to manage that. You did a great job of managing it. But you were just on the edge, right? That was about as far as you could have went before it started to give you more feedback and get more. Yeah. And for you, did you, did you realize what you did? I put my foot down? Did you put your foot down? No. I didn't. Break. Break again. Oh, okay. It's the right thing. Okay, yeah. And so, why it's the right thing for you, at least now, is because you're not super, like, handling, super happy to get control there, and that's not really tight. So, we just want to slow the bike down so we can make the bike cut a little tighter. Cool. Yeah. But what you did is you braked, you went back to the peg, you saw the obstacle, you went back to the brake. Yeah. And then you were able to turn tighter. Yeah. So what that tells me is that you were able to manage that obstacle better than you were when you were able to turn tight. Yeah. What that tells me is that when you're not able to turn tight in these corners, Hold the brake another five feet. Okay. Slow the bike down just a little more. Okay, you're releasing early and the momentum's carrying you to the outside of the corner. You'll be fine when you drive in. You're really good at driving in under power, braking hard, leaning the bike, getting out of the corner. There'll be the time. But for now, make the adjustment. We want to come out in the middle of every every turn at the track. I know the exit of every turn. For now, make that goal. Like I just want to be in the middle of the track. Okay. Because right, if you have control and you know where to put your bike, that's a real comforting feeling. Right. All right, but if you go somewhere and you don't know if you're going to run off into the bushes or a rock or a stump or a jump or a tree or whatever, that's not very comfortable. Right, so let's work on what do I have to do in the beginning of the corner to come out in the middle of the check. Let's just say the middle of the check is where we want to be every time. Now, over time, you'll be able to adjust, right? The middle of this racetrack is going to get super beat up. Everyone out here rides like cheap, right? The middle of the track, same line. For me, I would go to the edges, the whole track, right? At some point, you'll want to choose that. Right? Oh. Only because you like everyone hit that jump, everyone's going to jump right in the center of it because they know the jump's safe there. They know the face of it's not beat up. You know they're going to do that, but you don't want to have to do that forever. But, yeah, you don't ever want to hear that. <laughs> yeah. That's never a good. Thing. Oh my god. But just know the exit is determined by your entrance and your apex. Your apex is the middle. Right? If your entrance is too fast, your apex is going to be later. Yep. If your apex is later, you're going to overshoot the corner. If your entrance is a little slower, you can now turn two seconds. Here, you're going to Get your head turned to find your point of exit that you want to get. Find it with your eyes. Don't let it come to you. Right? If you let it come to you, likely it's not going to be what you want. Every once in a while it might be, but most of the time it's not. Find where you want to go with your eyes, go there. Okay? okay? Everything else with the body stays the same. Okay. One more set, we'll get some water. Okay. Okay.
basically we've got a start and a stop cone. We want half throttle here. We don't want to let off half throttle until we're past that cone. Mainly what I'm looking for is good foot placement. Rotate the hips out, flat back, lean into the power. Okay, that's it. And then just let off at the cone? Let off or break. Okay. You want to go ahead and start practicing your immediate braking? Yep. Okay. For you, it's good, right? You need that repetition. For you, it's going to be good because you're going to feel confident in being able to slow the bike down if you speed up. Yeah. Right? Most people think that you need to learn how to go fast to go fast. Really, it's you need to learn how to be really good at slowing down. Uh -huh. Yeah. Have the confidence to go fast. Go fast yeah. If that makes sense. Go fast safely, yeah. Yep. If you feel like you could stop your bike on a dime at any given moment, who cares? Go fast. Right? Because you're safe. And so, you know, I'm definitely not... No, I'm definitely not against you guys going immediately to brakes. Okay. But I want the main focus to be on making sure that we're charging forward with our upper body. Okay, leaning into that power. If you need an example, I'll show you, but if you're good, let's go. I think we can do that. I, I yeah, think I'm try. okay. What are you doing? Uh, yeah, can you give us one? Sure. I'm sure he won't hit me. Or? Yeah, just uh, go one side. Like so, if you're coming this way, come down this way. If you're okay. going that way, go that way. Okay, so you're so not I have on. one side, she has yeah, one side. Yeah, okay. yeah. No, no. You guys can no. just basically think of it as an oval. Yeah, just keep going. Oh, okay. okay. Right? Yeah. You just come down and go this way. When you turn around, hit it on this side. Okay. That way, you guys aren't going close. You know, right on. Cool. It felt better to sit fo more forward okay. for sure. Yeah, okay. Yeah, a little unnatural, but. Yeah. Well, that's just because you've been sitting back so long. Yeah, yeah. Not because it's wrong. And that's what you'll find in a lot of these positions is like, it doesn't feel right, but eventually it will. Yeah. yeah. Well, we're just like really it. just working with physics here. Yeah. Really just want to be in, in balance, right? Yep. And so I think that's physics. I don't know. Really <laughs> cool, so. um, but, anyways, it looks better. Okay. Uh, we're going to go one more set and then we're going to apply this drill to one of the turns on the track. Okay. Okay. On this one, I want to see you crack the throttle a little more. Okay. One thing I noticed with you when you're having trouble getting to that power, because you're kind of, now you're a little more crammed up on the front of the bike. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that a little bit? Uh, what do you mean? I'm up on the bike more, yeah. Yeah, for you're sure. up on the bike more. Does it feel like you can Well, I have to change my position and my right. elbow. Yeah. There you go. So one time you came in, that elbow was a little low. Yeah, I had to let go. And you didn't even really have enough room yeah. to turn. So we I had call to, that regrip. Um, yeah, I had to regrip. Yeah, so you just need to come in before you get set to go on power. Just regrip real yeah. quick and then charge it. Yeah. And you kind of have to regrip when you come off a little bit okay. too. Yeah. So like the, the two instances, the, the, the big instances that you regrip on the track, it's coming into the corner because you go from this position to this position. Yeah. And then in the air. 
Oh, that's wow. That's the more advanced, a right? You, you charge off the face wow. of the jump, and then you kind of you float forward, let the bike get underneath you, and then you land back into it. Wow. Right? So you, One day. That's probably a lot of <laughs> a lot of the reasons that you have that loop-out issue is being too far into yeah. it and not, being over, not resetting over the front in the air. It was just all bad. All bad. It was all bad, yeah. All bad. Well, so should I hit third? It'll definitely get oh. better. Thank you. It'll definitely get better. You guys are on the right track already. Like it's already like I'm seeing it start to click in your minds like oh this this feels okay. Yeah. You know? The next phase will be standing. Okay. Yeah. This whole everything we just went yeah. through, we go back through standing. And then you stay in that phase a lot longer because you stand more than you sit. For sure. But you need to understand this first. So yep. let's go through one more time. Let's try to crack that throttle a little more. Don't be afraid to get the thing up in the power band and ring it out okay. a little bit. You got plenty of run out. You're in complete oh, okay. control right now. You could drive to that tree over there, I don't care. Okay. You know, just I want you to start getting used to what that power is because a lot of the crashes come from being surprised by what the bike has because we haven't got it there yet. Yeah. yeah. All right, so just get it there. It's safe out here. You're not going to do anything too crazy. Okay. If you feel that front end starting to come up, which it shouldn't because you're so far off the front. Yeah. Off the front. That'd yeah. Be the only, that'd be the only dangerous thing is looping out. But you guys are way on the front of the bike. It'd be pretty hard to do that. Yeah. Okay. I try to hit six like we try to just easy stuff like there's like a big open it's not a track it's like yeah. natural terrain yeah. we try to practice as much as possible there's a flat area we try to go as fast as possible yeah, yeah. um yeah we've been trying to practice that um yeah. it's just kind of scary over there because there's like a bunch of rocks and ruts and stuff so it's not as safe as this yeah so okay that's good so you guys look fairly comfortable at that speed I want to go one more short one. Okay. Okay, and then we'll move over to the track. I want you to instead of carrying momentum, okay, right, and then cracking the throttle, I want you to kind of just put up to this. Okay. And go from nothing to all. Okay. Right. I want you to feel the bike pull cool. up in the power. Okay. Not just that high speed. I'm riding through the desert. I'm maintained. Right. Yeah. Because you don't need much movement at that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're just going faster. Yep. Yeah. Right. What I'm looking for is that I'm coming out of a corner yeah. Bow. and I want to go, yeah. right? But then I've got to come back into another corner, right? Okay. So that's this is what we're trying to get on this last one because that's what we're going to do out there. We're going to come out of a corner, we're going to hit it to the next corner. Okay? Okay. So this this should be the setup to execute over there. Okay. okay? All right, let's try it one more time.
Yeah. Yay. You your, when you're like take, about to take your feet off. Yeah. You're like, oh, this ain't good. Yeah, it was bad. But, but did you see what happened? When, it's a control thing. When you took your feet off, you took away the brake. Yeah. And the bike came back underneath you. So it's just a feel in your foot. You would have kept your feet on and just released off the brake and let the bike do its thing, let it come out a little bit. And yeah. It'll come back underneath you. Yeah. And so you guys, first off, look way better. Right? Like awesome. Way better, way more comfortable, overall faster. Right? Yeah. Tying the steps together. I see a throttle in the right position, braking in the right position, releasing in the right times. Now you're driving in much further. Right? So that timing thing is going to be something that comes over time. But overall, if we were to be like, if someone saw you in the beginning, someone saw you now and they're blindfolded, and, and they'd be like, oh, that's different. Yeah. yeah. That's quite a bit different. So awesome. th there's a lot of progress made there. But I don't, I think we're about at time, but I'm going to I'm gonna stay if you guys in good standing form. Oh, okay. Right? Make sure you understand what that feels like. Right. Okay. Do you have any questions on any of the stuff we worked on? No. There's one thing that I actually want to add um, that I think that maybe if you change. Mm -hmm. Do you see like the common marks are like here? Yeah. Right? And you see how that line goes straight to the outside? Yeah. Right? That skid mark's going straight to the outside. What you need to do in this situation where the straightaway kind of start, you really start your turn back here. Uh -huh. Right? The track's turning here. You have to treat it that way. You gotta set up wider on your acceleration. So you come out of that corner, you get your eyesight to here, you get to here under braking, you get your eyesight to the inside of the corner. So you make your pivot point here. Right, so you drive to the inside of the corner. Right, what you don't want to be doing is going against the grain. Right? And I think that you started to do that because you got that bike to kick out one time, right? Breaking on a lean. It was totally fine. You just weren't comfortable with it. It was great actually. Okay. Like that's if you have someone that's really fast, you're going to come in here and they're going to break. The back tire is going to be outside the front tire every time. Yeah. Right? And as you get better at breaking on a lean, that's just what it does. Right? And you just manage that by body weight and how much breaks. If you got a little more body weight back, you're going to get a little more traction in the back tire. You get a little bit forward, you're going to get a little more kick out. Okay? So it's really just back to the whole balance thing. But know that, let's just say for instance, you went on that track and you try to do the same thing and you went against the grade. What do you think is going to be right here in this area? Ruts. Ruts and bumps. Yep. You're going to be going in line with the track. So if you're like, well, Tyler taught me how to accelerate out of the corner and break into the next corner, but I crashed because I went across the ruts, that's your answer. you got to always make sure your eyes are looking at which way the grain of the track goes. Right? And if you do the same thing along the grain, you're going to be great. It's going to be fun. If you do it against those ruts and against those bumps, the front end's going to be like this. trouble putting the bike where I want it to go exactly. That's like, the time. That's yeah. time. Okay. Right? That's time. If you guys should get out more than twice a month, maybe <laughs> when the weather starts to pull up, yeah. it's a yeah. more healing, I think you start to realize when these little things start to click. Okay. Right? Even if you got out three times or once a weekend yeah. for a couple hours. Trying, um, for sure. You know, once there's time there, if you, if you want it to improve, it's that consistency. And it takes just a few months of like, okay, we're going every weekend for three months, just whatever, for a couple hours. We're in and out. We'll get up at six. We'll be out of there by 10. Yeah. You know, we still have the rest of our day. Yeah, yeah for sure. We're going to commit to that for a few months. And if you have a bit of a plan, you'll be really happy with where you're able to maintain after that three months or so, right? Then you could go out once a month. It's boating season again. Yep, yep. We're having a good time in summer. It's too hot, whatever. You can still go and, go and maintain. But just like any other sport, you need that training season. You mm -hmm. need that period where you go in and you put your head down and you do the hard work. Yep. Right? And then you maintain that. If you want to get another layer better, create another one. But it takes that consistency. Uh, so let's go stand. Okay? The whole time? Why don't you, I'm going to hold the bike. I want you to stand in the position that you know comfortable. And we're just going to make minor adjustments. Okay? So the, this is, the back's great. The arms are great. Take those heels and drop them down for me. There you go. See how that pulled the knees back a little bit? Yeah. They go back just a little bit. A little more. A little more. Now stack your hips over your knees, so come a little further forward right there. So just a slight bend in the knees, flat back. You're at a 45. We want to be at a 90 under charging and a 45 under, you know, excel like a D-cell. Right? So you're at 90 degrees, you're on the gas, right? 
when you're off the gas kind of coasting the corner you can drop up in about 45 degrees right? when i saw you guys stand earlier you're both about 45 maybe even 30 mm -hmm. when you're standing so you're okay. standing too upright okay. okay i did see you try to correct on the last one to get that head low so the important part is, is that our knees don't drive too far forward over our foot pegs we want our knees to be stacked over our foot pegs we want to be on the ball of our foot unlocked in the hips and then that low upper body flat back okay and so what i'm going to do do you feel comfortable? You think you can get hop in this position? I'm gonna hold you and put you there. Uh, no, I'll try it out. Okay, yeah, yeah, we're done. Um, what I want you to do is just go like five or six laps, not sitting. Just okay. go slow. Just put it. Just put it. Okay. See if you can get in that position, lock into it, and stay there. Let the body quiver a little bit. It's gonna hurt. Yeah. Feel great. Let's go five laps. The whole time standing, and then we'll end it on that. Note. Okay. okay. If it's a disaster, I'll stop you. Awesome. Right? If it's just horrible. But there's a couple cues that I can help you with that without stopping you. The most common is the knees drive too far forward. So if I tap my legs and point them back, you seem to straighten those legs out a little bit. Drop the heels down, straighten the legs out a little bit. Okay. And if I do this, I mean you've got two upright. You're back down to that 90. Those are the two cues that you're gonna fix your stand. Okay. Okay, without stopping you. that we ride for four minutes and we're like ah yeah hope he pulls me off this up you know what i mean yeah. Yeah, but here's some perspective for you is the pros have to ride in that position for 38 minutes right? yeah they barely get to sit there, right on the roughest tracks and the fastest bikes yeah. right so there's that level of fitness right but you can't necessarily get that fitness unless you rep these things out because what i will say from experience i know from experience i've gotten injured not able to ride but still able to work out and do weights and things felt like I was in the best shape of my life going into the gym, come out to the track, crap. Doesn't apply, yeah. yeah. Doesn't apply. You have to rep it out on the bike. You have to kind of suffer a little bit in that standing position. Mm -hmm. Every time you make your body hurt like that, you got one more lap in you the next time you come out. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so it's like, hey, let's go for, you know, you guys set a goal on the way to track. Let's do five, seven minute, or three, seven minute stand up motos today. Mm -hmm. In whatever order you want, just place them in there. Yeah. Right? And you'll be surprised in how quickly the body starts to adapt. And then also how much smarter your brain gets in getting you in proper position. Because mm. there's no real way to fake the standing. Right. You can kind of fake the sitting and crack the throttle and be out of position and get away with it. Right. You cannot do that standing. Yeah. You stand up and crack the throttle and you're in bad position, not right. You're off the back so fast. Right. It's probably why you have your loop outs. Yeah. Like you're sitting or standing when you're jumping. But if you're standing, you crack the throttle going up. That's right. where most people make the mistake. They get on flat ground, they feel stable, and then they forget that your bike's on an incline now. So you have to be even more forward, right? And it feels unnatural to lean way forward going off the jumps. You feel like your front end's gonna drop way down. 
not the case, especially if you're on the rest. Okay. So if you guys are gonna ride one today, yeah. I would spend a couple sets doing that. Yeah. Right? A couple things to think about. Don't let those uh, both of you guys have the tendency to let those knees droop to the shroud. You want those knees right behind the shroud, right above the foot pegs. Wow. Yeah. Right? right above the foot pegs. The it feels like there's not a lot is, to grip. Is that what's that? It feels like I don't know, like when I'm well, you're gripping plastic when you're gripping up yeah. here. You're gripping seat when you're gripping in the middle. Okay. Seat's grippy. Yeah. Okay. Right? And for real tall people, they have a harder time because their knees go above the seat. Right? Yeah. And that's why you'll see them have taller seats a lot of Got it. Uh, but you guys are both at a stack where it's perfect. Your knees are at the perfect spot. It's actually soft. Like for short people, like sometimes for me, yeah. it gets on the plastic and I'm squeezing on the plastic, it hurts the inside of my leg. Okay. Got but it. But for you guys, you're like right at that good, good height. Um, okay. Yeah, so that, that's about it for that. But I would definitely rep out the standing a little more and just let the body hurt a little bit. Because even if you're doing a little improper, it's still working the right muscles. Right. Yeah. Okay, and then okay. the next time you guys come out, I'll run you through a whole class on standing. Okay. But you're gonna want you're gonna want to do a little of your own repetition before we do that, because that yeah. class will kill you if you don't. Yeah. Okay. Any questions with any of that? Um, no. I um, so. I guess just what am I supposed to be feeling as far as transitioning the breaking foot, like when standing? Like, <laughs> well, here's the nice thing about standing: is you have your heel on the peg. Uh, or when you're sitting, you're kind of on the front of the bike. You really just have toe. Yep, yep. So you have all of the weight of your leg trying to manage. When you're standing, it's heel, and then it's the feel of the toe. Okay, so you put your heel back on yep. the foot peg, and then you tap it. Yeah. I mean, you don't just match it with your toe yep. on the front. Okay. No. Yep. And so, you know, that may be just a little field work where you go out there and just slightly power forward, break back. But it's this position, it's like, can't do it because I'm, you know, neutral balance here, but it's power forward, right? And then hips back and low. Okay. Right, it's not here, which a lot of people do to counter their weight. That's when you're seated, that's the only thing you can't. You can't go any lower, so you have to go back. When you're standing, you're power forward, right? And then you come back and low. Okay. Right, so the seats only got about much that much room before you and your butt. Okay. You'd be surprised though, even going through bumps, it won't hit your butt if you're in the right spot. Okay? Even if you only have that much room, it keeps it planted. Cool. Cool? Yeah. yeah. Any anything else? Um, no, can we take a picture with you? Definitely. <laughs> yeah, do you want to go get a quick drink? Yeah. Okay. We just finished up our day here with our very first training at MX Factory with the amazing Tyler, the owner. We're so excited. We learned so much. Um, yeah, I mean, it was amazing being out here for the first time at Spokes MX uh, up here in, near Austin. So, yeah, I mean, how, how did you guys feel, Gio? How do we do, Tyler? Uh, I've been looking forward to this for a really long time, ever since you got your bike. Um, we've been following you, Tyler. Um, trying to learn as much as we could online, but it's so great to have in, in person now. Yeah. No, I think it's great. Right? Anytime there's new people that come out, especially they come from the channel. Right? I started the channel a long time ago in the, in the, uh, like the mindset of like, well, this is for people that aren't necessarily going to be able to see me, um, can't afford it, can't get there, can't whatever, oh, live in you know, South Africa, whatever the case may be, there needs to be better information in the world. So it's always like super gratifying where there's people close enough that can't come out or people that are willing to travel in um, and get good coaching. Right? The goal is to keep everyone safe and give everyone a foundation to build on. You know, everyone wants to get faster, right? But we have to have that foundation first. So that's really what the in-person stuff, I think, you know. Kind of yeah, for sure. Thank you so much. How do you think we did? I think you did great. <laughs> I think you did great. Uh, unless you were bluffing me in the beginning. <laughs> but you could have. You know, you could have. Anything for the no, camera now. No, no, no. If you were bluffing me in the beginning to the end, then, yeah. But if you were what you were in the beginning to what you were in the end, fantastic job and you know for a lot of the viewers too they have to understand that it's a process and I'm sure you guys felt that today that it's a process we went and did one thing for an hour at a time we moved on to the next thing we did that for an hour right and we still need a bunch of hours in those in those movements so but just to have that understanding a lot of times the lessons is just to get you in that mindset of like okay well now we know what we have to do yeah right and you go out and execute and you get better and everyone's happy right so we'll be back yeah, definitely we'll be back. <laughs> thank thank you. you so much for thank having so much. me. Thank you. And Gio, of course. And thank you guys for watching our journey. We're just starting out. We're beginners. Please know, know a lot of hate. We just want some tips to get better. You know, at the end of the day, we just want to grow the sport too. And definitely, I would love to see more ladies out here. So if there's any female riders with some tips and how you guys got better, please leave them in the comments down below. And again, thank you all so much for watching. Peace. Thank you.
Mm-hmm.